And welcome to the show, you know what I'm saying? We're back. <laughs> they call me Marley Major. If y'all don't know me, I make music. And I talk about music business. So for who want to check out what I have in store for them, there's a link in my bio. You go to my YouTube, you watch more of this podcast. You feel me? So let's get to it. I was checking on my comment section today. And I noticed this comment from um, this guy. I forgot his name. You know what I'm saying? And he made mention of me making music for record labels to see that. And I'm telling you, bro, I am not making music for any record label. In fact, I own my own label, Jungle LLC. You can look it up on Google. It's there for y'all. But when we make covers, or when artists make covers of a regular music or of a regular sound or regular or, or celebrity, like let's say Afrobeat, let's say DeVito, I make a cover of DeVito's music, I am entitled to make a cover of DeVito's music. I love this song. That's why you have to make a cover of this song if you're an artist, just to show to his fan base that, oh, yeah, there's this guy called Marley. Why not? There's no rules of this game. Who the hell said we can't do what we want? When did artistry become somebody's opinion? But I get it. Everybody's bound to their opinion, which is fine. And I am bound to my actions. I can do what the fuck I want. <laughs> you feel me? So to that guy, that's just the best way to explain to you that you don't need a label. You don't, like, I understand that's the concept of most um, artists or most people that think, that don't know the back end of being an artist. You don't really need a label to move forward. A label comes in when you're big enough, when you are the storm, when you are that guy, you know, when you are the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't really need a label to keep your music out, to, you know, find your fan base, to uh, find you some airplays, to find you some streamings, to, you know, make you better as an artist. You know, I just feel like you need a label then. Because even the label won't come to you because you don't have the materials yet. So that's the reason why we're doing all these things to make sure we have enough clientele and enough materials, enough fans, you know, and enough music, you know, for everybody. So at the end of the day, when they come around, they have something for you, you know, and they don't devaluate you or your worth. You know what I'm saying? So that just to tell you, labels are just there to keep you to that big move. You know, like let's say Whiskey now, that Essence Whiskey song. You think, I'm not saying that song didn't do well. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the song didn't do well. But what I'm saying is that that song to be in an American airplay, for that song to be everywhere, for Kylie Jenner, those people like Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, it's all love. They love the song. But they are influencers. That's what big time influencers are for. Do you remember when this product came around, when there's big red boots and um, all of a sudden you started seeing celebrities, they are the first people to wear it before the masses wear it. So that's what is called packaging. You have to brand, you have to have a branding, you have to have ambassadors that will, you know, take your package and, you know, explore it and make their masses, make their following, make, you know, the people that fuck with them, you know, like it. So I don't feel like, uh, so label push is big in any platform. You need that. But for you to say that you need a label for a start, I don't need a label. You know, Molly Mitch don't need a label. We have our own label out here. Make your own label. If they're not trying to give you a label, fuck it. Give them your whole label. And that's it for today. And um, another thing that I noticed, like, all artists, you know, all artists, you know, in my own opinion, though, we tend to have a lot of music depression, you know, and this is going bigger and bigger. Nobody's really talking about it. And I am here to talk to you about it. So music depression is when you feel like nothing is going in your way, even though you are on the right direction, you're on the right path, but you feel like you don't have enough um, encouragement or motivation or um, you, you know, just a lot of stuff that deals with it, you know, emotionally, that we, as hardest, we need to, like, when you are in that process of music depression, when you feel like, oh, your, your people are not listening to you enough, or um, your friends and family that you thought was supposed to be that help, you need it, are not there for you at that time, or you feel alone. That's when you realize that 
it's close. That means that, that, that you're having that emotion as an artist. And that means you're close to where you're going. That means like, okay, at least you're going through this process. So whenever you are big enough and uh, as an artist, you already been there. You have, you've already been through this process. Everything is a process. You have to enjoy the process. You have to like breed from a young bull, you know, to a whole breed, to a whole cow. You know, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I'm just saying that's how I feel. That's my own opinion about all this process. Like, I enjoy my process. I don't want to blow up tomorrow. Truth be told, if I blow up tomorrow, what am I going to do? I don't know <laughs> because I've never been blown up before and I don't know what it takes because being an artist, you have to understand that if you don't have that clientele, if you don't have that resume, because it's all resume. If you don't have that resume, you're just going to be a one hit wonder or a one of one. And nobody wants that. Even though you, you when you're one hit wonder, you will make the most money of your life, which is true. But at the end of the day, we all need to understand that this money is money and it goes away. You know, uh, you've seen people come and go. You've seen people, they was millionaires when this music thing was going. But now look at them. You know, they hardly survive out here. So you just understand the process, learn the business, don't get depressed on some dumb shit, wake up, write your own songs, go to the studio, put all your pain out in your paper, put all your pain in your paper, or put all your pain in a vocal booth, and you know, tell the world how you feel, how they're not fucking with you. That's just my own best advice, is just when you go through music depression, take your time, breathe fresh air, you might want to like just change your environment, take a vacation, get some water in your life, see some sun. You know, those things really help. You know what I'm saying? Those things really help as an artist. Me, especially, I try to, like, take off breaks. That's when I, like, I press the brakes on all them bitches. <laughs> like, okay, it's time to, like, okay, just focus on me, my mental health. It's, yeah, and um, what is the question you want to ask me again? So how do um, you feel about writing? Do you feel like... Uh, oh, songwriting? I'm a songwriter. I don't care what you tell me. I'm a songwriter. And I feel like... First of all, this is 2023, and technology has evolved, and music has evolved. I remember the days where writing is still the big deal to today. I don't understand that writing, though. I feel like, you know, being an artist, you have your own right and your own opinion to how you feel about the direction of your music. So when it comes to songwriting, I don't feel like if some people love it, then that's for you. And the music of today, with the technology that we have today, I can just be on my phone and create magic. You know, that moment. I make music with moments. So if I'm writing, I might not be in that moment because I'm writing, I'm documenting it. I've been in... Um, being uh, this guy that I have it in my head, I have my writing is in my head, you know, I pour my emotions straight from my head and I just don't drop it. People think, oh, we just freestyle this song and go. No, that's not how it works. Before I, I take my time, you know, process it from your medulla, you put it on your um, uh, recording, you know, you play with it, play with it, play with it like your baby. And like, I, I don't make music just to make music. I make music as, as part of me, as my storyline, as my, you know, history, as what do I want to be remembered for if I have a chance to. We all have to document our process. So when I make music, I'm just not trying to connect to the girls in the club. I'm just not trying to connect to the woman selling herbs in the street. I'm just not trying to connect to the boy going to school in the morning. I'm trying to com connect to people to host humans, whether you are African, whether you are American, whether you are Indian, it's all humans. And that's what I love about music, is music lets you connect when nothing connect. Music will speak you for you. You know what they're saying, nothing, but you can feel it. Uh -huh. The emotions behind it. Yeah, you don't have to know what they're saying. It's just the soul. When your soul leaves, music leaves. So songwriting to me is great. You know, it perfects your craft. But at the same time, don't force it if it's not for you. There are a lot of music today that we've listened to. 90% of them are not written down. Most of them are just vibes. Vibes. Create vibes. And then if you're good 
like me, Marley. <laughs> you know, I, my process, I just go straight to the booth and I got in my head of the direction of where I want to go with the song. And I take ints in my head, like, okay, I'm trying to talk about life. You know, that means I have to talk about my depression. That means I have to talk about my weakness. That means I have to talk about my strength. That means I have to talk about, you know, everything that evolves around life. And I'm not saying that's a particular uh, niche. I'm just saying, like, just pick topics. It's, you know, it's just how it is for me. Music, I try to break it down for people to understand that you don't have to force um, your sound. Let your sound come to you. Just because something is trending right now. You know, I remember a time when, um, you know, when this sound was trending in Nigeria. Um, um, uh, what's this sound? I'm a piano when it came then. You know, DeVito, shout out to DeVito. You know, he put us on. I mean, I'll, I'll give him credit. And I'll give Mady, you know, that credit too. I first listened to I'm a piano record with Mady, you know. And I can remember that record. You know, then we didn't really understand that was like South African vibes, you know. But now we really get it. Like, okay, and the video put us on, like, on the map. And shout out to Davido, you know, shout out to everybody making us proud. And I'm telling you, Davido, are you telling me Davido wrote these songs? Or are you telling me, um, you know, most of these songs are just something you could vibe to. So why stress it you know, when God can bless it? You know, that's just how I feel. But uh, nevertheless, if you feel like you uh, you love this content that we got going on, you know, just subscribe below, link in bio, link below. It's going to pop up in your stream like that. Yep. So subscribe to our channel, Molly Mish TV, and help us grow so we can give you some gems and give you some more games. And um, take it from here. Uh, believe me, we're going to be here for a while. So catch you all next time. I'll see you. Be blessed. Stay safe out there. My name is Molly Mish, and you're watching Molly Mish TV on YouTube. And shout out to Jazzy for holding the camera. We'll see you. <laughs> all right, y'all. See y'all later. Peace.